being the workforce analytic geek that I am, I want to get started right away with some, with some research. So those of you that are emailing on your phones, that is totally cool. <laughs> Actually, if anybody that doesn't have their phone out, if you can go ahead and grab it out. Go ahead and get it out. So we're going to get into some live research right now. <laughs> okay, so once you've got your phone out, go to your flashlight app and turn it on. That's it, just like this. Okay, good, yeah, I've seen flashlights, come on. Okay, Ooh, cool. so what's gonna happen now, I'm going to ask you the question on these screens. And if your answer is yes, I want you to raise up your phone, very loud, very proud. So do we have a talent gap in our state? Okay, <laughs> right, okay. Now raise, no, keep them up, keep them up. Raise your phones like this. I don't know if you guys realize this, but right now my dream of coming a rock star is <laughs> Except I still can't sing. So we should probably get right back down to what we came here to talk about. Um, let's see, so if we go to the next slide, we'll see that if Thomas Donahue, President and CEO of the United States Chamber of Commerce, if he were here, he would have raised up his phone. Look at what he says here. He says the future of American business and the American dream will be won or lost based on whether or not our communities can find the talent that we need to grow and become successful. And if the, the community of HR professionals from Louisville and Southern Indiana, if they were in this room today, they would have had their phones up. If we look at the next slide, we're gonna look at two critical pieces of data. This came from the research that we are going to dive into, a talent and alignment analysis. We're gonna go full throttle into it. But right now I just wanna focus on these two key points because they really underscore all the work that we're focusing on. If we look at this slide, there's one really good piece of information, but then there's one piece of information that's not so good. So let's look here. It says that 82% of all the participants in this survey in our area are, the, are expecting moderate to high growth in the next three to five years. This is good news. Our economic climate in Louisville is healthy, it's strong, we are in the money. That is a long way, it's a long way where we were in late 2000, 2009. But now we're, this is where the slide kind of becomes like a frosted shredded mini wheat. <laughs> you know, one side is really sweet and delicious and the other one is rough and coarse and tough. <laughs> Because this point here, this really underscores what we're talking about. 81%, almost the same amount of participants from the first one are noting that they can't find the talent that they need today. So this is really, really alarming. Because we can't expect that if 81% of our HR and business professionals, if our companies can't find what they need today in the workforce, how can they grow? How can they experience that three to five years of moderate to high growth? You can't do it without people. You can't do it without the right talent. And this really is the focus and the core of the work that the Sherm chapter in Louisville has been focusing on. We have been using this data to empower ourselves and, um, and really, really focus on how to take care of these issues. And so if you go to the next slide, We'll look at this, this is our chapter story. Through all of this talent alignment research that we've done, our members can now work with their leadership team. They can take in this research, look at the workforce analytics, and choose to hire, recruit, and train and develop the right talent for their companies. And our chamber, our chapter, or our chapter leaders are working with our partners in our city and in our state to understand this talent alignment research and better decide and make programs that will better fuel and propel our businesses to hit those growth margins in three to five years. We work with chambers, local and state uh, ch uh, workforce innovation boards. We are working with local and uh, local educational providers. We are working with some of the most intact resources, I think, in our state, KSUS, the Kentucky Center for Education and Workforce Statistics. We've got their data partnered with our data, data, the voice of the business community, the HR community, so that we can make informed decisions on how to better strengthen our workforce. And that's what we're gonna learn about today, and that's what we're gonna talk about. So I'm so excited that I'm here with my three esteemed colleagues. We've got Lynn, we're gonna talk all about how HR is rallying across the bluegrass. 
And then we're going to talk to and hear from Bridget Strickler and Dr. Dan Ash about the Louisville Bridging the Talent Gap Analysis. And I think it's really important to note that this project was funded by the Lumina Foundation. It was gifted to our community. So we're so proud to be sharing this stage with them. All right, Lynn. Thank you very much, Beth. And I really appreciate you all being here to hear the story. And from the state perspective, I want to explain a little bit about what Kentucky Sherm is all about. First of all, we have a map up, and I know it might be a little bit difficult to see that, but I wanted to show you all that the human resource professionals who are part of Kentucky Sherm are all across the state. They have an impact in all the businesses that they are working with, and we are hopeful that we will be able to take this wonderful initiative from the city of Louisville, from Louisville Sherm, and be able to duplicate that, but it's going to take a lot of work to do. First of all, we have 13 chapters, and those 13 chapters have approximately 2,000 HR professional members. So it is far-reaching. Our state council helps those, those chapters to achieve their initiatives, and we have about 35 HR volunteers who are part of the state council. Now, one of the things that has been very, very important to us in terms of the state council has been our workforce readiness initiatives. This is not the first one. This is not the first thing that we have looked at. We have been involved in several, and we do have two co-directors, and their responsibility is to notify the state council and also to work with the SHRM chapters and all their members across the state to keep them informed about what Kentucky is doing in terms of workforce readiness. Now, some of those projects have been the Kentucky Project Graduate, finish your degree, the Ready for Success, the Kentucky High School Work Ethics Certification, Kentucky Unbridled, which is connecting the future workforce with employers, and the Kentucky Career Center, building awareness for long-term unemployed. And uh, she's probably going to kill me, but Sherry Powers has been very, very instrumental in getting this information out to our members. So. Kentucky Sherm is always looking for new things that we can do, new initiatives, and how can we help our state? How can we serve our professionals? How can we serve the, the organizations that we're working with? How can we help to advance Kentucky? So as I was sitting in a coffee shop several months ago, listening to Bridget and to Beth talk about this fantastic initiative, and not so much that they did a survey, but what has been the impact of the results of that survey? My mind started drifting immediately to, how can we get this done? How can Kentucky Sherm do this? What do we need? What, what are our resources that we already have? What are the resources that we need? How can we get the funding? But yeah, at this point, I see that we're losing some time, and I don't want to take all the time to talk about this. So I want to turn it over to Bridget, who's going to talk about Lumina and the relationship with Lumina and Sherm. So this stage is really about the power of partnerships, and it's been my privilege to be part of this partnership. And Louisville Sherm and Southern Indiana Sherm are key in this case study. But there are also two important national partners we have, and that's the Lumina Foundation and the Graduate Network. And without them, this research would not be possible. The Lumina Foundation is a large private foundation committed to seeing the proportion of, of Americans with a college degree, a high quality certif certificate, or other credential increase to 60% by the year 2025. And the Graduate Network, with 22 sites around the nation and one here in Louisville, is committed to seeing more of the 36 million adults in this country who have some college but did not finish their degree complete. Critical to this is by the year 2020, 65% of all jobs will require some form of post-secondary credential. So I think with the time re remaining, Dan, we ought to get to the dashboard. I agree. So let me just give a little bit of, I'm going to move forward here because we want to spend as much time uh, with the remaining time that we have of uh, uh, really giving you some sense of how to navigate this tool that we hope all of you use. I mean, this is the kind of thing that is open to the public. Uh, you can gain access to Go the ahead. dashboard at any time that you want. 
So uh, let me get into this. So the idea here is that when uh, we first started working with SHRM, uh, the notion was that we wanted to reach as many HR professionals as possible in the Louisville and southern Indiana area to get some sense of what are the challenges that they are facing. When we did this, we were, because of Sherm's capacity and because of this great sense of volunteerism that you guys have, uh, we were able to get a lot of businesses involved. In fact, uh, we had over 275 businesses fill out either all or a portion of this survey. This gives us a powerful voice to be able to, to understand just what are the talent gaps, what are the difficulties and the challenges that people are facing um, when they seek uh, trying to fill some of those talent gaps. So if you take a look, at this, this is an interactive data dashboard that we have on Tableau. Many of you have probably used this. And this, gives, this first page gives us a sense of the business landscape that is in the Louisville and southern Indiana area. And uh, we'll be looking at, uh, together, we'll be looking at some of the various aspects on this to give you a sense of how to navigate and how to use this and hopefully come to some ways of dealing with it that will be helpful for you. Yeah, I think when we look at the business community landscape and we start there, again, we'll go back to all the projected growth that these businesses in our community are experiencing. But Dan, I know we can break this down by some of the larger sectors. Can you help our, our friends here go through some of that? Sure. Um, so if you, if you take a look at the top portion, the green portion of the uh, dashboard, you'll see over on the left that there are multiple ways that you can break down this information. Uh, you can filter it by either size of organization, in small, medium, and large. Uh, in this case, for Louisville, we have also have filters that focus on the primary industry clusters uh, that are consistent with the goals for the Louisville area. And so that includes uh, health care and social assistance, manufacturing, uh, professional services, transportation, and warehousing. Now, we don't have time to go through every bit of this, obviously, but just for the sake of, of looking at one or two examples, uh, Bridget, if you'll scroll that down, and let's take a look at the right graph that shows um, up a little bit. Up, up, up. Uh, but right there. So this shows the uh, idea of the organization's projected growth over the next three to five years. Well, as you can see, if you look at the entire community of businesses in the Louisville area, there's a lot of expectation of either fast or moderate growth. One of the advantages of having something like a filter in this, if you can again go up, Bridget, click on the professional scientific and technical services. Now, when you do that, you're immediately going to get, as soon as the internet cooperates, up, click it again. There we go, now you can scroll down. Immediately what you can see is that the professional services in the Louisville area are really expecting a lot of growth. Almost no one is expecting anything to diminish over the next three to five years. So, uh, Think about how you might be able to use data like this. If I were seeing this and I were in the chamber, I would immediately start wanting to get with the professional services in my area and ask them, what are the kinds of things, what are you anticipating? Where is the growth? How might we be of assistance to you? If I was in government, I would be immediately trying to look at how are we assembling our workforce development efforts to be able to, to consistently and as accurately as possible meet the needs of what these organizations are facing. If I was in education, I would be immediately asking, how are we building the curriculum? How are we building the coursework and the graduates that we are turning out to be able to provide whatever is needed in this area? So there are a lot of planning opportunities that go on here. I would encourage you to take a look at more of this as you would have time in your, on your own to be able to filter it in ways that might be helpful for you. But that's just the first page. That just gives us an overarching kind of view. And if you'll scroll down just a little bit, Bridget, I'll point out a, just a couple of items here. Uh, the, up again, there, up, down, <laughs> there, 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 okay. Uh, you can see that we have a really good distribution of businesses in this. It is notoriously difficult to get businesses other than large corporations or, or uh, education-friendly corporations to give us information like this. But we have a great distribution of people and a lot of different industry clusters. So again, this is the type of thing where the voice that you're seeing here is legitimate and has great reliability. Let's go to the next one. 
Yeah, let's look at the skills need landscape. This, there's a couple of things that stick out to me here. The first one is the first graph. So if we look at that first graph, we see that the very bottom number, 2%, that means that only 2% of businesses that participated do not have some way of measuring skill and professional development of their employees. So 98% do. So it's very safe to assume that employers need to grow and develop their teams. We don't have the population we used to have. The baby boomers are coming out. So the development piece is critical. The training and education piece is critical. And if we go down, I really love how we have the academic and applied skills. And what professionals, businesses are saying that the education sectors are supplying to the workforce. Can we go through some of those? Well, we have enough time to look at only one. So yeah. I want to reinforce what Beth is saying. One of the questions that we ask HR professionals was, uh, I want you to think about your, the, your labor pool in terms of your high school diploma uh, holders, you know, the high school graduates, those graduates with an associate's degree and those graduates with a bachelor's degree. And do each, in each of those categories, does your labor pool have the skills that are needed in this particular skill set? Let's just take a look at mathematics. You can see that on the bottom there. Uh, in this mathematics uh, question here, we'll see that amongst the high school diploma uh, individuals who are in the labor pool, only 44% up one, up, up, up no, there, good. Uh, 44, this is fun doing this. Uh, 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 only 44% of high school graduates have the type of mathematics or numeracy skills that are needed to be able to do their job. That number jumps a little when you consider associate degree individuals who uh, now it's up to 63% for four-year college graduates, it's up to 81%. So a couple of uh, points to make about something like this. Um, the, clearly, we have a lot of work to do as educators. I'm a retired psychology uh, professor, and I can tell you now that the, if I were in uh, education leadership, I would immediately be wanting to go to the, um, the businesses in my area and say, what is happening? What are the skills, the specific mathematical numeracy skills that we are not addressing that you are having to deal with? You're having to deal with the shortfall of what is happening here. How can we begin to deal with that? But on a more positive perspective, one of the things we see is that, and this is something I would really want to make to all of the businesses out there, you can see that when you gain credentials, it adds value to your business. When, when for each of these credentials as they go up, there's a larger and larger proportion of people who have the skills that you need. This, this kind of gives us some sense of what is the value of education in our community. Okay. Let's go to the next page. So this is the hiring landscape. When, when we're looking at the hiring, we, we saw in that first uh, slide that like 84% of the businesses that were surveyed said yes, they will be hiring and they do see the, the businesses picking up in the next three to five years, but are they having any luck finding people? And <laughs> what type of employees are they looking for? Well, if we take a look at this, uh, if we look at just the top two graphs here, uh, it underscores and adds reliability to the uh, notion that there is going to be a lot of growth. I mean, we have 78% of uh, employees that are expecting to be hiring full-time regular staff. If you scroll down a little bit there, Bridget. Keep going, because we want to look at the bottom portion. And we got some information from the uh, participants in this survey asking them about specific types of jobs and how much difficulty you are having in uh, hiring individuals in that. So you can see just a couple of examples here for the skilled trades and for those who are in that business, I'm not telling you anything ab about this at all, but for skilled trades, there is a significant amount of difficulty in finding the people uh, that are electricians, carpenters, uh, machinists, et cetera, that, uh, that you need. If you scroll down a little bit more uh, in some of the more managerial aspects, you see that um, our community is having s substantial difficulty in finding managers and executives to hire that have the appropriate training and the appropriate skills. Again, what this underscores is information that can lead to, to beginning to take action. And I love the theme that we had of partnership as we started off earlier on because that really is what we're trying to drive to is creating a much stronger partnership between businesses and the education systems that are in your areas. So let's go ahead to the 
Right. Well, if, if they're having a difficult time, if all the organizations are having problems finding people with the skills, what about the training and development programs that they have internally? What is that relationship between the businesses and education? Well, this page right here is, to me, one of the more revelatory uh, concepts. Because uh, I'll just tell you very briefly what that, get, that graph is showing. The vertical graph shows the, uh, how important various organizational goals are to the HR professionals who completed this. I would point out, uh, Bridget, if you'll float over the top, the very top right hand side, yes, that it is not seeking filthy lucre that is the goal of most businesses. <laughs> Instead, what you see, what, what people have said is that it is increasing customer and client satisfaction. Well, that sense of importance on a scale of 1 to 100 is what our HR professionals showed us. But if you look at the horizontal axis, what that shows you is how much does education influence your ability to reach that goal. So you can see that everything here is in the upper right-hand quadrant. What this tells us is that education is extremely important for our businesses, for our community, and helping them achieve their goals. If you can scroll down a little bit. So given the importance that people ask, I want to end the uh, look, uh, considering this uh, dashboard with two pieces of information. The, uh, bar, uh, the pie chart on the left uh, shows, it might be hard to read out there, if you do not have any in-house training or advancement opportunities for employers, would you consider partnering with a local college or other learning organization? Well, we find that a relatively small number of people already have this, but we see a substantial number of people that are saying, uh, if we go below that, Bridget, uh, yep, about 40% of people say, uh, I would consider it, I don't have anything right now, and then you have others who are saying, I don't, I'm not interested at this time, but in the future, and if I can find out more, I want to find out more about this. Let me underscore that, uh, in my opinion, the, it is the local community colleges, universities, learning providers that have much of the, uh, the right response to your skills difficulties. But then look at this on the right. Look at the pie chart on the right. Does your organization work with local education and training providers to assess local skills gaps that can be addressed through their programs? Most of the people below that, set close to 75% of the respondents say uh, no. We're not working with any colleges or universities. You all, I, I cannot overemphasize how much of an opportunity we have here to begin to, to really bridge, as the name of our effort is, to be able to bridge some of that skills gap. So let's begin thinking about looking forward. How might we, as we look forward, Lynn, maybe you can sort of summarize the kinds of things that we're thinking about for the future. Well, one of the things that we have already done in terms of Kentucky Sherm, we have already met with the, some of the chapter leaders. We have met with government officials. We have been able to show them the information that we have accumulated through the dashboard and through the survey. And thanks to El Sherman, and thanks to, to Dan and to Bridget, they were able to really dig deeply into the data to show them not only what were we finding out, but what can we do with it? How can we make an impact? So Kentucky Sherm has been doing this. We now have plans to get together with that uh, 2,000 mighty band of volunteers to see if we can have the success at the grassroots that Louisville has had. It's going to take money. We do need funding. We're also looking at options and how do we fund this project? How are we going to get the money for it? Because we have the drive in us to say we want to help Kentucky advance. We don't want to be at the bottom. We want to be at the top. Thank you all. Great. And I think we have a few minutes for questions. We do, and uh, we'll ask all of you, if you can, to make your way to the microphone uh, in the aisle way uh, to um, a ask your question. If you would, please identify yourself, and we'll begin. I'm Alan Rose with Sullivan University, and I've had the privilege over the many, many years of working with Dr. Ash and Beth, and they're great people. I wanted to thank them for the many hours they've put in on this. This is on target, and if I may, Dr. Ash, I like to call this a roadmap. There you go. And I'm concentrating on the skilled workers. I've been in the workforce for a long time. <laughs> I have never experienced 
the shortage of skilled workers that's facing Kentucky and all of the United States as it is today. I left the uh, Skills UA conference last week out the fairgrounds on my way to my car. A couple of people recognized me and they asked me if I could help them that day find some skilled people. I was able to do that. <laughs> they got back to the office. Every day I get calls for people and companies who are looking for skilled workers. We're able to respond to a lot of that, but I spend 90% of my time traveling this state trying to find help for employers who are desperate for skilled workers. This is not a criticism on anybody, it's an opportunity. So let's take advantage of it, yep. use this roadmap, put our gloves together and our forces together, and we're gonna lick this problem one way or the other. Yep. We're still faced with over 600,000 jobs in manufacturing that we're not able to fill. This is an opportunity, let's go get them. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Thank Rose. you, Secretary Rose. <laughs> Any comment on that, just uh, to uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I, I just think it's interesting, the deficiency between the businesses that are saying, yes, we are willing to work with educational providers. I mean, that was like 75%. And then almost the same amount of businesses said, but we're not doing that currently. So I think finding the answers to bridge that gap between they're saying they will work with them, they're saying they will partner, but why aren't they? So that you can do that, because that's really what it's gonna take. And uh, I would like to add, uh, just very briefly, uh, Secretary Rose, the, one of our emphases in this effort is uh, we're trying to avoid a top-down approach. We think that a lot of times when we get data from very large studies that focus upon very large organizations, we do not have the insight and the voice that we need for small and medium-sized companies. So this is a very community-based, uh, the community is a level of analysis, and that is the, that's the value that we see in this. So this is more of a bottom-up process because a community, uh, Prestonsburg may need uh, skills quite differently from Paducah. And those are the kinds of abilities, you know, when you're talking about the road map, we want to be able to see where are we uh, climbing up into the mountains and where are we riding along the waterside. So that's a really important element to take on in this. The other point that I would want to make is that um, the power of insight like this, as you were, as you were pointing out, uh, really comes from uh, you looking into something like this and thinking about how this might be able to be played out in your community. If you were to have this data in your community, how might you use it? Would you be able to use it to be able to assemble some of the education leaders and the business leaders together to be able to, as you say, try to get a, to attack this issue and to deal with it once and for all? You know there are a sizable number of voices out there that say we have no skills gaps. We have to get the reality out there to see what it really is. Well, Dan, I think with the, with the help of Kentucky Sherm and, and the members and the 2,000 HR professionals across the state, we can do this. We can get this data, we can provide it to the businesses and education and the government so that they can have the synergy to lick this problem. It's a tough, tough problem, folks. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for your presentation. My name is Dave Armstrong, uh, president of Thomas More College in Northern Kentucky and a uh, member of uh, Leadership Suite 16. <laughs> <laughs> we may not be the best, but we are the sweetest. <laughs> you are the sweetest. That's right. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland. They all know this because the Cavaliers just won the NBA championship. <laughs> Where's Emerson? <laughs> um, and Thomas Moore just won back-to-back -back women's national championships in basketball. But anyways, uh, I'll be honest, I'm, a little, I, I'm very frustrated about this situation yeah. that we're talking about, and I love the statistics that you brought today, because that's been my experience. Okay, uh, vice president of a small college in Cleveland, at many organization meetings like this, three years now as president of Thomas Moore, I have stood up in meetings like this and said, I am the college president, business that you say you have a gap, come meet me, tell me what you want, I'll hire the faculty, promise me that we'll partner in this and you'll invest in this, and you don't have to promise the jobs. If they're not good enough, don't hire them, but promise me the internships and the co-ops, and we'll have a partnership. In three years and in 10 years in Cleveland, so 13 years total, do you know how many companies have come to me? Don't make me sad. Zero. Now, we're still moving ahead anyways. We're creating new programs and new majors, and we're going out to businesses and saying, we will do concentrations in what you need. 
but I've seen these statistics for a long time. Yep. It's time that education, because I'm saying we have to do our part, and business, the rubber has to meet the road. Yep. Yep. And enough of the talking about it and talking about the problem, and in my opinion, the blame, we have to move forward yep. and make, things, things, make these things happen. And it will only happen through partnerships. And the greatest example is we visited UPS last night. <laughs> All these young workers, I'm, I'm looking around going, where where'd they get these? They pay for their education. It's a Metropolitan College. Yeah. What a brilliant plan. 2,200 employees that they have that are attending college right now because they've invested in them. That's thank how you. they I got was, their workers. Thank you for that compliment. I was the founding executive director of that program. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, let me just say, um, uh, just, just like Secretary Rose, I've been doing this a long time too. I'm 66. I know I look like I'm 36, but I'm 66. <laughs> I promise you. But the yeah, but it, it, I agree with your frustration. In fact, a lot of what motivated us is this sense of how do we begin to take these data and create action? Because I, I ain't going to live forever, and I'm getting sick of going to of drinking bad coffee in, in offices and talking about this kind of stuff. And uh, so one of the things that I really liked about this effort is that, and, and I don't want to say this was unanticipated, but boy, when this happened, I was really glad, is that we began to see ripple effects that I have not seen before in these kinds of initiatives. And Beth, it'd be great if you could sort of describe like some of the things that happened uh, in Louisville Sherman. I thought, holy cow, this is good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think when you think of employers, I think HR is on the battle lines of this every single day. I mean, they're the ones that get the pressure cooker when those uh, jobs have been sitting open for 90 days. They're literally at war trying to find this talent. So they're such a good thought leader within business to work with for this. And I think that's been a lot of it is that I think when we first started, Dan said, if we get 40 people to fill this out, I said, no, HR is going to step up. This is going to yeah. happen. And we, the more and more results came back, he was like, wow. So I really think that they're so key that it's been successful. And ever since then, I mean, we've had the opportunity to, to sit in front of Secretary Hal Heiner and share this data, who was saying this is some of the best workforce data that our, our state's ever seen. We've had the great opportunity to, again, work with KSUS. My friend Justin Otto's back there somewhere. Yes, <laughs> they have some of the, some really, really good data that we're not using. And so now we're able to have that opportunity to use this together, the, the state's data with the business voice. Um, we've had the chance to, I'm trying to think, about, we've worked with our chambers, our state and our local Louisville chamber uh, at the suggestion of Kent Euler. I don't know if he's in the room as our president of the Louisville, the Louisville Chamber, GLI, he's the reason why you're seeing the sector breakdowns, because it was him that said, this is really good stuff, but can you break it down by sector? So I think that Louisville, Sherm, these HR members now have this, this voice and this, this moment where they're going to step up, I hope, and really, really try, and that's what we've been seeing since March, since we got the data back. Yep, exactly. So, so uh, sort of, uh, just to wrap this up here, we have one minute and seven seconds. The, uh, <laughs> uh, the, we will have the uh, address for getting access to this uh, where you can reach it very easily. I'm hoping that the Kentucky Chamber can send an email out. It's an easy uh, dashboard to begin to navigate and to look at. We're very interested in the suggestions and the criticisms in the ways that we're, if, if you have communities where you say, wow, this could really be useful for us, let's begin to start as we heard from the President of Thomas Moore. I loved what you said. I like your action orientation. Uh, let's begin to actually do something about this. Thank you all for your time and your attention. I did not see one person up front do any texting while we were talking. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thanks. Thank you all.